Good again everybody. Welcome back to In My Shed. I'm BC. I'm quite amazed at the reactions I'm getting to the uh, 100th of a millimetre debate with the cylinder grinder. It's good it's dragged a few guys out of the woodwork and the comments are coming and a lot of good advice which is something that I need. I'm not a professional cylinder grinder operator and it's an old machine and it's an unknown wheel. So we've had another go at adjusting that this morning. Gave it another 300 out at the edge of the table so I'm hoping that'll bring it back in a little bit closer. I don't know I'll get a chance to run it today. Uh, tomorrow the audio will be better because we're expecting rain and showers. Fan, did you hear that? So finally the solar powered fan will die in the arse. Make it a bit better. A few purchases first to go through with you. I saw a few items on Timu that uh, took my attention. I did buy a CBN grinding wheel off them a while ago and I was very, very pleased with that. Uh, haven't had much of a chance to run it, but dollar value for money. It appeared really well balanced and well made, so I was happy there. I'm after Imperial Allen keys. I've got two pommy machines. Specifically, I wanted a 316th swivel head Allen key. The only thing I can find still being made is by gear wrench in the States and they want about $39 US for one size and I thought you can stick that when there's no sun shining. So I hunted around and I found an Imperial set on Timu but I didn't check to see if it was ball end and that's bloody or not. But anyway, what I did get, a very nice uh, plastic handled T-handle set with a mounting bracket from uh, 332 to 38 in uh, 30 second sizes and that was about $5.95 so we'll see if it works I do have quite a few Imperial Allen keys left over from previous employment but it's just mixed bags a lot of the smaller sizes are gone okay one thing I picked up was this fabulous set of diamond lapping plates I don't dare drop one because I think it'll multiply and become two or three. But it's got a crosshatch surface and I think it goes from memory from 200 grit up to 1200 grit. This is perfect for micro lapping uh, braised carbide tools which is what I'll be using a fair bit more of in the future and demonstrate a few things to you guys. And this was $24. You pay about 35 Australian for one here. So who's taking the piss? So very, very happy with that. Like I said, happy till I drop it. And suddenly I've got 40 of them. But we'll be seeing how that goes in the future. And here is a little beauty. A little bit of history first. When I first started selling industrial abrasives, I started selling some coated product from SIA and they were agents just finishing the agency. I think the brand name was Gershwin out of uh, Switzerland, tool makers, degussing stones or hand finishing stones. And I sold everything I had to customers and bugger me the agency closed and I couldn't get any for me. And there was a little bit available but companies like Norton used to have silk carb and Alox dressing sticks in three or four different grades, three or four different shapes and very well priced but nobody's buying anymore so they've disappeared off the market so here we have a little box of old assume aluminium oxide rectangular in shape and I say alox because of the color they're orange there's uh, I think five different grits here and two of each grit and they go from uh, 180 to about 600 grit. And if I try and push that in anymore, I'll break it. It's presented in a very nice little plastic case. Well, I think that was about $15 for 10 sticks. Which, coming out of Asia, that seems to be about the right price. But uh, I do have a few Norton brand uh, polishing sticks left. But they'll soon disappear off the market and they'll be very, very difficult to get. And then we'll end up making tool makers polishing sticks and running wet and dry or no fill paper over the top and wedging it in it. I'm kind of over that. So hopefully this lot will see me out. So all up, 
I think it was about $80 at Timo, which was, yeah, that was quite good. Looking forward to see how these perform. Now, from a fellow watching me from afar down Chiluga, Victoria, something like that. Thank you very much, Mark. I'm going to repower the Coons borer, not with a new motor, but with new wiring. I'm going to take the prehistoric monastery style switches and control circuits and give it the big A, or most of it. And I'm going to fit. Uh, yes, Kawa. BFD. Uh, quite obviously not a cheap piece of SHIT. Uh, very well presented. So I've got a few electrical enclosures coming from a good mate that I'm buying off him and a few uh, contactors because we'll still need to be able to disconnect electrically and we'll see what we can't put together with the help of our friendly electrician. Thank you in advance Mike. So two of these came in the post and I will reciprocate with him. He's just got himself a Shaper CMZ, but the uh, item is, he's got a 350, I've got a 450, and his is a later model with two-speed motor, etc. But I've got a few surplus high-speed steel tools here. I'll put together and I'll pay him for the freight. It was too generous of him not to send me a bill. Okay, next thing we'll go back and look at the uh, cynical grinder. Back again at the JNS. I'll show you a setup here. I'll have to tilt you down so that you can have a bit of a squeeze and I'll get out of the frame. The mechanism is fairly simple, but you really have to be told how to use it, and I haven't been. So, I'll show you what I did to today. I should have brought you around before, but I just plain forgot and point out a few parts of the mechanism here. See if I can get it in view. Yep, that looks like you're good. I'm a bit of an angle to the screen, so it looks horrible. Oh no, that's better. Okay, what we have here is the table adjustment. And it's just a, a few parts. You've got a fixed stud, goes into the table. This is the nut assembly, goes on the end of the stud. The nut has a collar here. This is a dovetail slide that goes in underneath the top table. Now it has a groove at the back for the collar to run in and then at the back it has a series of grooves. Now one thing you've got to appreciate if the screw here was long enough to give you all of the taper adjustment that you want it'd be a bloody long screw sticking out the front of the machine or out the back and being an absolute nuisance. So what you get is this yeah pin that locked back in. <laughs> You're a bastard. The pin that drops into the slots in this slide. So you position the table roughly to where you want it, drop that pin into a slot and then you fine adjust it with the nut here. And it's not supposed to lock up. Anyway, it worked for me earlier. Uh, I did adjust it and I didn't free this up again so it's my bad. But what I've done is I've used the one hundredth of a millimetre indicator up against the side of the table and I figured out that I wanted about one and a half mil there so I went one and a half hundredths there so I went three hundredths here which will bring me up short but I don't mind being close I don't have to be exactly at zero if I'm within a hundredth of a millimetre thank you God that's very bloody close okay so the scale marked out here in the grease or inches per feet Oh, look, there's no really good vernier scale there. I don't think you'd get within better than a half a degree or something like that. So you've got to use a dial indicator and calculate the taper out. But I think that'll be a hell of a lot better. Uh, today I want to do a bit on the riding car, a bit of cutting up for that. So hopefully we'll get to run this tomorrow, pending weather. Okay, talk to you tomorrow. Well guys, here it is again. I managed to get the table to move, I hope reliably, by two tenths of a thou, and I'm now doing a spark out pass. 
as you can see there's a lot more flood coolant going on we'll just see how much of a difference it's made Okay, I'll stop the table action, take it out by about a turn. Now to keep the die hearts happy, turn off the coolant and let the wheel dry out for a bit. With a bit of luck we'll get to see something with the micrometer. Bring it back when the splash guards are down. Well, back again guys. I've done a quick check and bingo! I don't believe how good uh, I was running substantially more coolant and one problem before was not just the um, cooling effect I'm taking bugger all and I don't think that matters too much for rat's ass. it's getting rid of all the swarf there's quite a bit of swarf inside the wheel guard and I noticed that even though I backed it out um, half a turn on the infeed dial there's still a little bit of sparking out on the end and I think that's shite getting picked up in the wheel guard and dragged around with the wheel but Let's do a bit of a measure up. Two eight one zero five and a half. Now we can see that the wheel did continue to just touch the surface or the ship has been dragged up, so we'll measure right next to where the wheel is. Two eight one six two eight one five and a half two eight one five and a half again. Well, half a hundredth of a millimeter, I think I'll say good enough. Now this will be my test bar for up on the lathe. I want to do an alignment check on the lathe. But as I said earlier, it's good enough for me when I put a new job on and I've got to move the tailstock or whatever, I can throw that bar up if it fits between centres and do a rough alignment of the machine off that. Now I've got a little bit better at uh, unclamping the table. I'm using the micrometer with the base jammed in the tub, which I think made a hell of a difference. But boy, uh, that is a bloody good result. I even bought her the birthday present. Little squeegee out of Ikea. I was there with a the lady yesterday and I think $2.45 but it'll help me to scrape all of the shine out of the tub and down into the coolant tank. Well guys, that's good enough to make me happy and I've got to admit, I fluked it. I don't know what I'm doing on this machine. Maybe that helps. <laughs> Everybody knows. But that's close enough for me. It took a bit of farting around. Now also, there was a comment about a corkscrew effect visible on the surface. Look, uh, I could see something faintly in the light there. You're talking about a million of a bloody inch. It's now zero. I can't see it on any angle of looking at it. So I would say that that affects out. I haven't changed the table speed, so I don't know what that could have been, except maybe the swarf being regurgitated around the machine. So it all looks lovely, as far as I can tell. From here, I go on to a few more model railway parts. I measured incorrectly, ah, and the pins I made are all bloody short by about 10 millimeter. But I've got a bit more of that size stuff that I can make. Get things going there. Uh, I will chase up a ball and down key because removing and fitting that end wheel guard is a bit of a terror. Okay, until I get something more to do and this will be the end of this series. Um, at least it's now up and running. I'm a bit more confident. I can get in quickly with the wheel, get onto size as long as I remember where I finish up on the dial. Running a bit more coolant. Uh, everything's going well. Okay, if you're new to this, please like and subscribe. And uh, thank you for the support. The channel is now back up to best ever figures. And I'm also back up to more likes from America than from Australia. Must be the accent. <laughs>
not the pretty face. Bye for now.